and misogyny, um, but now it's coming to light, which arguably is a good thing, at least people call it out and people lose their jobs as a result. Have you ever personally been subject to sexual harassment? Yes, all my life. Um, actually, it started when I was at university. And to this day, I'm still terrified that I will run into again the group of men who did it, who invent... Uh, I was at university pre, thank God, Facebook and social media. So they were limited in the tools that they had to do it. But I'll never forget the night that I was in a room with them all and they threatened to gang rape me, let alone the posters that they put up around the college when I had the temerity to stand for a position in the, low, in the student union telling people not to vote for me because of who I'd slept with. And that happened at a Cambridge college. I wish I could tell you from the stories that I hear from young women that sexual harassment in our universities isn't an issue anymore. I think it still is. I tell you that because I think that culture isn't unique to Parliament, where there's privilege and entitlement. And frankly, it's always the men that people think is least likely to do it who are involved in it. Because certainly the, the young men, and they were men at the time, they were late teenagers, have gone on to be doctors and civil servants and high flyers. Um, but I tell you that because I think we need to have an honest conversation about why this isn't changing anytime soon. Many of us started talking about the sexual harassment and misogyny and discrimination that we saw when we first got elected in 2010. Well, it's now 2022 and these stories are achingly familiar. I'm really pleased that we have an independent complaints process in Parliament, but frankly, it isn't moving quick enough. And I know too many cases where women are still too frightened to come forward. People are too frightened to talk about what's going on and what the outcomes are and what happens in terms of people defending their friends rather than recognising that we have to change that culture worries me because we only get an opportunity to refresh our parliament and bring in those new voices every four or five years. I know we've been having elections more frequently than that, but I think that's going to, to change now. And, you know, one of the things that really troubles me is that 41% of people in this country just think that democracy doesn't work anymore. When you have that many people who think that, that's when extremes come into politics. That's when people start being able to say, well, we need other ways of running the country.